We're going to begin with that better than expected, really, jobs report. Uh, the U.S. economy added 253,000 jobs last month. That's good news as people are going to work. The unemployment rate dropped to 3.4 percent. And President Biden spoke earlier today touting the report and addressing the ongoing debt limit fight. We're not a deadbeat nation. We pay our bills. The last thing this country needs, after all we've been through, is a manufactured crisis. And that's what this is, a manufactured crisis. ABC News business correspondent Alexis Christophorus joining us now from New York headquarters, along with our Elizabeth Schulze, who is live at the White House. Elizabeth, let's start with you. Um, you have been there where the president has been speaking. Let's just at this hour, tell us where things stand on the debt limit talks and what do you think the consequences are here if the U.S. doesn't pay up? Well, look, Kira, the president today was praising this jobs report, talking about the strong growth that it showed, those 253,000 new jobs, and said a clear risk to the economy, to this strong recovery that we're seeing, is the possibility of a U.S. debt default. Now, we've been talking about this for months, but the date of this possibly happening is approaching by the day. Of course, the Treasury Secretary has warned if the debt ceiling isn't raised by June 1st, that could have big consequences for American households. So what are we talking about here in this kind of political back and forth. We're talking about the risk of the government not being able to pay out Social Security. We're talking about the stock market taking uh, uncertainty, 401ks taking a hit, possibly the U.S. credit rating getting downgraded as it did in the standoff over the debt limit back in 2011. And ultimately, the big question here is, is the full faith and credit of the United States at risk as we see this back and forth between the White House and Republicans in Congress? Will they be able to reach some sort of agreement of agreement as the clock is ticking here. And as you have this underlying backdrop of an economy where jobs are continuing to grow, the unemployment rate at 3.4 percent, that's a 54-year low. Generally, this is a jobs market that looks pretty solid, and surely the president does not want to put that at risk. Absolutely. That, that's good news for a president looking at a re-election campaign coming up. How does all this play into, into the White House's strategy? Well, sure, Terry, the president says, look at these numbers. This is what we've done in my administration. He points to the job growth that has been seen just in recent months and the fact that this is still a solid pace. Now, important to point out the overall kind of pace of gains in the job market has been slowing down. We had this record high level at the start of the year, and it has been a little bit slower. But 253,000 jobs is a very good number. It was, as you pointed out at the top of the show, above expectations of 180,000. And importantly, there were gains in a lot of industries like hospitality, professional services, kind of across the board. And that's obviously something the president wants to tout, guys. So Alexis, let's talk about the numbers now. Break it down for us uh, and the takeaways for you from this latest report. There's a lot to like in, in this report, Kira. I mean, yeah, the headline number, 253,000 jobs added, more than the 180,000 we were expecting. Um, so the, the job market continues to be a pillar of strength in this economy in this very uncertain time. I mean, think about all the headwinds uh, facing the economy right now, uh, the banking turmoil. We did see the economy slow, right? We only grew at an annualized rate of one 1.1% in the first quarter. Uh, despite that, though, employers continue to hire at a pretty good clip, and you've got an unemployment rate of a, at a 54-year uh, low. Also, if you look inside this report, wages... They're not keeping up with inflation, but they are still rising. That's worrisome for the Federal Reserve because higher wages uh, definitely put pressure on uh, inflation. And you've also got more people now participating in the job market. There's something called the labor market participation rate right there, 62.6 percent. That is a solid number. It ticked up and it shows that uh, people of, of working age between the age of 25 and 54, men and women in the workforce now at, at the highest level we've seen in about 15 years. Guys? Mm. So, Alexis, for a while now, the, a lot of smart people, supposedly, have been, been saying, well, a recession is coming. It's coming. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. And this is a good jobs number. People are going back to work in big numbers. Where's the recession? Yeah, exactly. I think it's going to be uh, hard for some economists to make the argument that we are going to fall into a recession when you have an unemployment rate of 3.4 percent. If you look back at other recessions throughout our nation's history, it's always been accompanied by a high unemployment and a weak job market. We just don't have that now. So it's yet to be seen if that's going to happen. Do we do we you know, stand on the brink of a recession and not technically fall into one. Could be that soft landing, Terry, that the Fed has been, uh, you know, trying to attain over the past year with all of those interest rate hikes. Hmm. 
Alexis, Elizabeth, thank you guys so much. Happy Friday. Thanks. <laughs> Good news on a Friday. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.